Pundit is the football trivia game. Every sale using the code LIONS at checkout now gives a whopping 40% discount plus a £10 donation to Lions Food Hub. Visit punditgames.co.uk to order your copy. Punditgames.co.uk Code LIONS. You're listening to Aston Law, broadcasting from the beautiful South Birmingham. Set no substitute. Welcome to the most intimidating arena since the days of the Rome Coliseum. As you can hear, the two teams are entering the den this afternoon. Norwich City in their yellow and green, Millwall Courts in their dark blue home kit. You join us on a very cold and grey afternoon here in South Bermondsey. Big time football is here, dear listeners. Big time football, Millwall sitting in fifth place after that so rather disappointing uh, two-all draw up there at Luton Town in a week. Uh, Norwich City sitting in seventh position, just uh, two points behind us this afternoon. This is the big time, your Lions side, dear listeners. In goal, Jules Long, back four, Murray Wallace, J- Jay Cooper, Charlie Cresswell, Danny Mack. Front, uh, the midfield two, Ryan Leonard, Jules Savile. The attacking three, Oliver Burke returns, uh, Zian Fleming, Jules Hanneman, and up front, Mr. Consistency at the moment is George Bradshaw. This is a huge afternoon's football. Not critical to the league table, but big in terms of psychology. The full house here at the Den this afternoon, listeners. And they certainly believe it's a big match. Gary Rowe was trying to play it down slightly. Um, talk on the podcast, of course, and the point being good enough. This is going to be a tough game. Norwich are um, sitting in seventh. They do bring more resources than we can bring to bear, but they don't have the Den, dear listeners, do they? They very much don't. A huge opportunity, big march ahead. We get the, a week's grace after this before the next fixture away at Reading. It's been a hectic, hectic period of football. We've done really, really well to make it this far. Twelve vital games to go before we get a shot of the promised land, and it's nerves. Can it be done? Gary Rowett mentions the Millwall mentality is one of the reasons for the impressive run. The scene has collected 12 points, 12 points from seven games across February. It's writing in his column, though, in the, uh, the match day programme, as it is, the email thing. He says we must not lose sight, though, is that uh, we do not lose ground on anyone. Four points from six on the road last week to the healthy record, referring to that disappointment. Kenilworth Road after achieving a somewhat fortuitous two-goal lead up there, giving it away for a two-all draw. Big atmosphere in the den, listeners. Norwich will kick off. Meaning, of course, and Mill will be attacking the away end in the first half in accordance with the Archbishop Bede of Jarrow Monastery's writings in his Anglo-Saxon Chronicle in 9th century England. Big times here, listeners. 12 games between us and the promised land. Away we go. Big shout out to um, the chaps and Joe of the uh, that Millwall podcast. Met both of the boys outside at the Cold Blow Lane end before the game. Uh, lovely blokes. Do tune into their shows. I've really been admiring what chaps has been doing. Uh, and and uh, Joe, they did a, a kind of a joint podcast the other day. Really interesting, good value stuff. So do check it out, listeners, on uh, YouTube, I believe. Gary Rowe is saying we're taking on obviously Norwich City this afternoon. Um, despite the injuries that our squad are carrying, well, there's a real togetherness in the camp and determination to succeed for one another. I do get a sense of that, listeners, don't you? I think there is a real uh, sense of togetherness with the fans, the club, and the squad. Lovely work over there by Oliver Burke, forcing a throw in early on as uh, Norwich tried to play the ball out. That's Millwall at its best. Historically, Millwall is at its best when we come together. Another free kick. Uh, David, the um, Norwich manager, a bloke called David Wagner, wrote some great operas, incidentally. Um, Dave, if you're listening, um, complaining that we're going to be physical and direct. This is the eighth minute applause for um, uh, young baby, Mavin May, May, Baby May, uh, who passed away, sadly, just shortly after birth. This is eight minute applause in, in honour of, of her and her family. 
really good response around the, the den here. Nice, nice gesture by Millwall. The player's actually been paused whilst the applause takes place. That's a nice touch by the referee. Nice gesture, nice gesture. Hopefully the family gets some solace from, from that round of applause here at the den. This is being played back to the goalkeeper. A bit, a bit iffy, so we say. That's gone straight to Jill Savile. He cleared it under, um, under heavy manners there. Oh, this Cresswell's got caught now. This is a break on for Norwich. Could be an error. That's a great tackle. That is a great tackle. Referees give a free kick. I thought it was a great tackle there by um, Ryan Leonard. Referees give a yellow card. Ryan Leonard. I thought it was a great tackle from my um, vantage point. 70 yards away. It'll be a dangerous looking free kick. It's fairly central, just uh, left of the D. A lot of talk about Jules Long in goal and whether um, he's as good a goalkeeper as Bart Belkowski. I think it's quite clear that in terms of shot stopping, Bart is the man. But results have been what they have been with Jules Long in goal. Um, I'm presuming he um, brings obviously better distribution skills, as, as, as uh, has been discussed many a time. But this is going to be a test here if they can get it on target. We're 12 minutes in. Terry Seen does take it. It's on target straight into the belly of Jules Long. Easy enough. 13 minutes in, listeners. Huge punt forwards from Jules Long for Oliver Burke. Chase down. He's on, on the right side. He's through a goal, but behind for the last by the Norwich defender there. 14 minutes. Going to be a right-sided corner. Jules Hanneman was going over to take it. It was a moment there. I thought he was through. In it comes. It's towards the centre spot. This towards Ian Fleming. Cleared after a fashion by the Norwich defence. 15 minutes in, no real opportunity. That was probably as close as we came to a chance there with that long pump forwards by George Long to find Ollie Burke. Lovely little uh, intercept there by Burke. This is now Ryan Leonard with a little chip forwards for Honeyman to... He does well to get his boot on. He's put into touch, unfortunately. I thought he'd overhit that. That would be a veritable greyhound to get after that. Veritable. Where did that word come from? It'll come out of the, the, the Oxford English Dictionary listeners. Floodlights now on. They weren't on at the start of the game. It is a, a dull afternoon, listeners. I can tell you that much. So you've got to be careful, Will. Just trying to overplay a little bit in our own half. Norwich are pressing forwards on us. Um, dodged a slight moment there, trying to play out from the back. But this is Nazi and Fleming. Tom Bradshaw down the middle. He's through on goal one on one. strike, beautiful ball forwards from Sam Fleming, Bradshaw's one on one, did not panic picked it into the top right corner 1-0 Millwall the Dane explodes listeners I want to say that again and then he fell forward, broke my neck, one on one with a goal slots it just over the goalkeeper 1-0, really nice finish by Tom Bradshaw. I was trying to see the replay for you there, listeners. I was leaning forward and nearly seated forward and broke my neck. That would be the end of the podcast if I did that. This is some atmosphere, listeners, some atmosphere. Slightly has come out of nowhere. Uh, not huge, um, not plenty of pressure, but no chances so far. But that really was um, a beautiful ball through down the middle from Zian Fleming. 21 minutes inside the first half, listeners. Norris trying to play a passing round the back style of play so far. Um, obviously, they're in you know, the uh, maelstrom that is the den this afternoon. Whether that will be effective for them remains to be seen. Breaks. This is Ian Fleming now in the centre circle. He's on the run. He's got Burke on the right side of him. That's a beautiful ball. Oliver Burke. Oh, just shoots it wide on the uh, daisy cutter along the floor. Wide left. 22 minutes. Another beautiful ball through from Ian Fleming, the creator, the creator of everything so far.
be wonderful. He really did, um, from all the way from the Netherlands, have strong views on the one West stand, wouldn't it? Mill sitting very much behind the ball. Norwich having the task to break us down. Overplaying at the back. That's gone all the way back to the goalkeeper in the end. This is uh, Pukey. I'm the, the only player I do know from the Norwich side. Lovely strong challenge by Zia. Now he gets on the floor, but the referee's giving nothing. 28 minutes in, listeners. So far, so good. I don't want to tempt the um, lady fate, the gods of football. But it's looking good so far. Mill just... Um, Fasting about with it for me at the moment at the back. I don't really like us trying to play our way out of, from the back, but in the end it does fall to Charlie Cresswell. We never look comfortable trying to play our way out from the back. I think that's what it is, listeners. I don't know if Gary Rowett listens, but can we stop doing that? As in the end it does get punted forward, but that will fall to a yellow shirt, sadly. I mean, we're still playing the ball around at the back. I really don't like this. <laughs> in the end, Jules Long does punt it right down the other end of the pitch. That's better. <laughs> It breaks. This is Joel Savile now. He's got Danny Mack overlapping in 31 minutes. Ball in from Danny Mack. There's no one really there. It's thick headed away by the Norwich defender. It's gone for the corner on the right side. Right sided corner, Norwich. Come towards 37 minutes. Taken uh, short, 19. It's ball. One each. Wedge in a penalty area, like a side foot shot in. Look like one from the training ground, as they say up the telly. One each. Side footed home in the right side, bottom right side corner of the goal. Through, through players, whether you want to blame Jules Long again for that, I don't know. But that's going to be up to you and your starting position. But um, poor goal to give away, listeners. Poor goal. I shall have to see that to give a full judgment, listeners. See it again on the YouTube. Slight sense of deflation around the den at the moment. After that equaliser. It hasn't been a half so far of um, huge in amounts of incident. Obviously, there's the very well-taken goal by uh, Tom Bradshaw to open the scoring, and then that somewhat frustrating equaliser. But apart from that, there's been lots of sound and fury, but nothing much in the way of uh, free-flowing football overall, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. This is a 25 on the right side. The ball's flashed across the Millwall goal there. I think we dodged a bit of a bullet there, listeners. 25 punted the right side across that somehow evaded everybody. Some of Mill's passing as the half's gone along, it's looked a little tight, but that does fall into the path now. Oliver Burke on the right side, he's cut inside. What can he do? Would he have a shot? He tried to. Unfortunately, the defender followed him all the way there and blocked it at the last. Norwich City spreading play now in the last minute of uh, added time. And this is a two on the right side, they're right. 25 overlapping, he's looked dangerous for me, that 25. That's cleared in from the central part of defence. There's the half-time break. Disappointing to finish at one each in that half. I thought Mill did brilliantly well to open scoring. We've probably gone a little bit off the boil as the half has proceeded. But there we are, at the break in this big, big, big fixture. Mill 1, Norwich City 1. We'll be back after these messages. Achtung, Mehlball. Teams are coming out, listeners, for the second half. It's some of the most bizarre news and bizarre images I've ever seen in over 50 years of following Millwall. With apparently, Gianni Infantino, yes, the president of the FIFA.com uh, World Cup um, fame, um, is in the den this afternoon. What's he doing here, listeners? Has he, has he bought a ticket? Well, apparently, he's at some conference, I read, on on Twitter and wanted to come watch Millwall, which is a perfectly valid thing to want to do and makes a lot of sense. Maybe we've misjudged the man and with all that human rights business. Um, anyway, yeah, Gianni Infantino is sitting in the director's box. Um, big shout out to the, the FIFA big man. Teams are out, lined up, ready to go second half. Lions attacking a cold blow lane end. Sense of disappointment. Over the uh, equaliser on line, some blaming Long. I'd have to see it again. It looked like it went through somebody, Fleming, I believe. And there's a penalty area. Many, many blaming Jules Long again, but um, we'll see. We'll have to have a look at it. Nice little dribble here, Murray Wallace going through like uh, last of day, Jules Best on the left side. Is Ian Fleming now with the ball? He's tried to play a, a ball that's over clever there. I wonder if he had pie mash, Gianni. I bet he eats it all the time out there. He lives in Qatar, doesn't he? Probably has his own pie mash um, chef, I'd guess. With all that FIFA money sloshing around downtown Qatar. I would. If 
if I had um, fee for money and I lived in Qatar, I'd be um, organising my own Manzi's, uh, Manzi's chef. Norwich do keep the ball though. Coming forwards. Jake gets done again. The ball shot all across goal by Fuki. Blimey. Dodged the bullet there less than 53 minutes. Tired looking balls now. George gives away the saddle, gives away the ball in midfield. That's a great tackle there by, by Murray Wallace, but they do keep possession, unfortunately. They're coming back us. This is Norwich now. Shot from distance. Tipped over the bar, I think, by George Long. That was on target. Good save. 54 minutes. Going to be a left sided corner. Great strike there from the Norwich player, but George Long did well. There's the, there's the, uh, the madness of the man. One time he'll give you away a goal. Another time he'll save a goal. This is a left-sided corner. Taken short. Oh, it's gone in their own goal off of Tom Bradshaw. Another little um, training ground move has come in off a Millwall player. Own goal. Another sloppy goal, listeners. Um, we need to change it, listeners. We're not looking um, capable of turning this around at the moment. We've got to change it from the bench. Just have a look and see who's on the bench. What more? Essay? Vogel, Sammer? Take your pick. Burke just takes a moment. He did a little tackle and stopped. He's not got that kind of fire in the belly, it strikes me. Lovely taking the strike. Uh, to him, Fleming. Oliver Burke bot bottled it there. He did bottle it there. He did bottle it there. That won't go down well with it then. The goalkeeper came out to meet it. And um, <laughs> as you can hear, he bottled it. That was Oliver Burke. This is Zian now. Troy Food finds Burke on the right side, fall into the middle. There's Tom Bradshaw, it falls. Oh, he's bouncing around on the goal line there. Runs clear somehow, offside given. 61 minutes. Norwich taking an eternity over every little break in play that they can, as you would expect. Very disappointing to be behind in this game, listeners. We've rather let it slip out of our fingers so far. This is Norwich now on the right side, coming past um, Murray Wallace well, like a knife past Cut Butter. This is the 17. It's 3 1. Beautiful take and turn by the 17, listeners. Murray was well beaten for pace there, well beaten. Ah. Ah, this game's slipping away from us now, listeners. And a silly yellow flare on the pitch. Lines a bit of a mountain to climb now, listeners. A goal for me will transform the game. Obviously, we find ourselves 3 1 down now, but one goal and we could be back in the mix. This is Watmore now on the left side. What can he do? He's, that's got to be a corner. He'd give a goal kick. Beautiful skill, Romanis. That ball floats into the danger zone, but he's headed away by the yellow shirt defender. That's a shot clatters off a yellow shirt for a right sided corner from Ryan Leonard, listeners. Good work there by SA. He showed real, real touch there. It's going to be Vogel Sam that takes it. In it comes. Deep, deep, deep. Wow! Tony Cresswell meets it on the foul. It was, of course. Fleming, not Cresswell, dear listeners, as you will well know. Authority by Cresswell. <laughs> Nicely done, Millwall. <laughs> now we've got a game. <laughs> Den's come alive. This is SA. Gone all the way back to Jules Long. <laughs> Millwall throwing on the right side. 89 minutes, listeners. This is George Evans. I can see it from here. Crossing. Takes it past his man. He's got the ball into the middle. It's scuffed up in the air, bouncing around. This is Tom Bradshaw. Is he and Fleming ball bouncing around and they can't get it clear. Fuck me. Real melee there, listeners. 30 seconds of regular time, then whatever it gives in terms of added time. Ian Fleming to take a long throw now. Comes looping towards the, the six yard box, it falls to George Evans. He catches it completely hopelessly. Goal kick. Jake Cooper acting as a winger now, listeners. Gone for a right sided throw in. Two minutes in of the six added. Ramar Nestle. What can he do? He's got the ball into the middle. 
This is uh, Scott Malone. What will he do from distance? Dipping shot, but taken by the goalkeeper. Going to be a long throw. In it comes, right side, long throw, bouncing around. Bouncing around, this is Tom Bradshaw on the right side. Oh, off the line! Bloody hell. Fired in for Bradshaw. Hooked off the line and the goalkeeper collects. And that could be it. I think that's your lot, listeners. Um, what to say about today's game? Obviously, we started brilliantly to take the lead, but then completely let the, the game get away from us with that uh, equaliser and then the two defensive errors, really. The, the equaliser and then the own goal in the second half. That was probably the critical moment. Third goal for Norwich was um, a really well-worked goal, actually. I don't think there was an awful lot we could have done. Raw pace beat Murray Wallace down the right side. Uh, since then, obviously, giving, giving ourselves a sniff with that Charlie Cresswell goal, but in the end, it's just not been good enough today, listeners. Very disappointing result if this is how it finishes. Uh, it has indeed finished there. 3-2 to Norwich City. Um, there we go. Achtung, Mailball. Hi Nick, uh, Jim Hackett here, just with a couple of points over the game yesterday. I thought it was, uh, yet again, a, a really good advert for championship football. I think um, Gianno Infantini would have been very surprised to see that the Den was rocking and rolling and uh, there is football underneath international level and Premier League. So that was always uh, a sort of bit of a surprise seeing him. But apart from that, the crowd was fantastic. I think the anticipation was slightly um, nervous, only because of the, the way the, the games have gone recently. Everybody looks a little bit jaded, a little bit tired, and uh, despite the fact they're professionals getting paid thousands of pounds a week, uh, I think we can all sympathise with them there. In terms of the game, um, obviously we're all disappointed because we gave, and, and you've got to say we did give them two goals from the, the two corners, could we've done better if we'd have had a, a full hitting team out there with everybody fit and raring to go, probably. But sometimes uh, these sort of days don't go for you, and you know you've got to give credit to Norwich. They've probably seen something in our set piece defensively, and uh, took advantage of it, and not just once but twice. And if you're an opposition coach and you can get away with it once, you're very happy to get away with it twice. I think is uh, is a fantastic day for them, and obviously the third goal, everything sort of conspires where they keep the ball well and they end up scoring a good goal because they are good players. They're a, a slightly different type of team to us in the fact that they they look technically better all around the pitch. Their movement, the, the likes of Pukki and uh, players like that, a little bit sharper, a little bit better and, you know, as, as well as our lads can play, we've got to have a team that's all 11 are on top of the game for us to compete and uh, I think yesterday was a, an example of where the the games during February have, have taken it out of them and we are one or two that were a little bit light yesterday and it was disappointing but you know sometimes you've got to expect these things and I think the fact that we finished the game so strongly tempered everything and made that everybody sort of walk away saying well we were a bit unlucky, we possibly could have equalised and we possibly could have got more out of it. But I think to dig any of the players out today would be very, very um, harsh and disappointing. I thought our spine, yet again, looked quite decent, but there was, in each sort of area, there was there was always a, a little bit of lightness. I thought Long had a good game. I think people were going to be digging him out for one of the goals, but you know what, sometimes I think they, th there's another agenda going on there. I think it's more pro-Bart than anti-Long, because I think he had a really good game. He set the first goal up as much as it went to Bradshaw's header to Fleming. Uh, sorry, whichever way, yeah, Bradshaw's header to Fleming. It was Long's kick that was so good that actually set the header up. So, you know, I, I think he, he made two or three other decent saves and uh, I was very happy with him yesterday. I, I don't think you can blame him too much for any of the goals. The back four, I thought Cresswell again, I don't, I don't know what's going on with that lad, but he did make a mistake in terms of trying to run it out of defence yet again. He still seems to need to learn that part, but the rest of his game was fantastic. He was, He's like a leader coming through at, at 19, whatever he is, 20. And uh, we're benefiting from it this season. Let's hope there is something in the 
in the in the future that means we we do keep hold of him because he looks the sort of player that we we'd love to have down at, at the den. Um, I thought Cooper possibly a little bit off it today. Danny Mack wasn't as good today, but again, I, I, you can't criticise them because I think they give everything they've got, and uh, you know you can't ask for any more. Murray probably the best game he's had for a while, which is slightly ironic. But then he is an engine, isn't he? And he just doesn't seem to tire. So. The fact that he plays so well is a, a good lift for everybody, I think. And I think our, our biggest problem today, and if if we're all honest, I think Sav looked a little bit off it, and, and they're certainly not digging him out, because I think he's he's been one of our better players this year. If, if you had a top five, he'd be in there. But I think he was just slightly off it today, and, and his passing wasn't as uh, accurate and as good as it has been. But Leonard, I, don't, I think he's, he's back, and I think now when Shackleton comes back, when Billy comes back, We've got a nice group of four players there that can fill those two positions. But unfortunately, today was like the the the, the end part of those four. We just couldn't get any more out of any of them. I think Leonard was one who looked fresher today, and he looked like he's he's got a game in him. So, you know, apart from uh, apart from him today, I think in the centre of the park we'd have struggled. So disappointing. I thought Burke. People are going to be very critical of him, call him lazy, call him whatever you want. But the one thing he's got, and he showed it a couple of times today, is that ability to get him behind. So, again, I didn't have a problem with him. I thought he worked hard first half. I thought um, on the other side of the pitch, Honeyman doesn't stop working. But I think even he looked a little bit leggy today. So, again, you know, we're just getting caught up in that tiredness. And we've got half an hour, 40 minutes in us, but I don't think we've got a full sort of two halves. And... Overall, I mean, Bradshaw, Fleming, they get, well, ironically, they both get sort of two goals each, I think, on the, the the scheme of things. But great to see them still, 13 goals each. When was the last time we had these sort of partnerships? It's uh, it's brilliant to see. Anyway, Nick, that's my observation anyway. Again, I'm not overly disappointed. I'm disappointed with the result, obviously. But I think you can see that they gave it their all. You can't ask for any more. And uh, let's hope they have a couple of days off now. Have a a break into it because I think these next 11 games will be uh, not a roller a roller coaster let's hope it's all one way because I think the way our results have gone recently if we've got fresh players out there week on week out I think we'll be fine so come on you Lions good luck Hi Nick John Rankin just calling in after the uh, home defeat against Norwich well for me that was a game that we lost rather than Norwich beating us um First goal from Bradshaw was absolutely brilliant. We were all delighted. Uh, their equaliser just before half to, uh, half time was very, very poor. It, we were right on top of it. We seemed to go to sleep with short corners. It's a problem we've got on Millwall. Um, and uh, the guy shot it in low and hard. It went through a group of Millwall defenders. Jules Long had it covered. He would have saved it. One of our defenders just poked a foot out and it just lifted it over his hands. Uh, basically, you would put that down to communication. If there was a shout, I leave it from George Long, he would have saved it. Um, prior to that, I think Ollie Burke, when he was put through by Zian Fleming, if he'd have netted that one, oh, I think that would have been game over for us because we definitely had them on the ropes. In the first half, we had them on the ropes, uh, but they played their way back into it um, their goal to go 2 one up was a Bradshaw own goal again. They spotted our weakness. You know, sides aren't going to, and we need to learn from this Millwall. Sides are not going to float the ball up into our box, are they? Right? Can we just bloody well learn that? They're going to play short corners. They're going to play it on the ground, and lo and behold, they would see one up. Their third goal um, was a moment of. Uh, uh, of quality on the edge of the box. From what I'm told, it was down the other end. And there we were. It was a, it was a stomach punch. 1-3 down. I've got to say, we did play well and we exerted a lot of pressure. Zian Fleming scored a second goal. But we just couldn't get the equaliser back. We left it with too much for us to do. You know, Norwich, clearly a good side. They won a lot of second ball. Um, I don't think George Savile had the greatest of games, to be honest with you. He looks pretty tired and off the pace. We didn't win a lot of second ball. We seemed to win the ball and then lose it again. So um, I think we're missing Billy Mitchell. 
Ryan Leonard did reasonably well, um, but I don't think he's properly match fit, and it showed. Uh, Roman SA was absolutely superb when he came on. Um, uh, I thought Zian Fleming had another fantastic game, and everyone else played reasonably well, but definitely a game that we lost. We had them on the ropes, and we should have killed them off in the first half. I thought it was going to be another Millwall Watford. That's what I was thinking of. I thought we were going to really put it on them. We'd had our dip in performance, and we were going to beat them. But unfortunately, with a quality team like that, you've only got to make a few mistakes, be a bit sloppy, and they're going to capitalise on it. You know, That's why they're ex-prem. So over and out, we're seventh in the table. There's been some sort of funny old results this uh, this Saturday. But I noticed that Luton have won their game against Swansea. So, you know, it's all to play for. Come on, you Lions. Hi, uh, Nick. Matt Richards here. I just um, died in my, my thoughts um, about that game. Um, just driving back. Yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's really disappointing result, obviously. Um, I think the performance, though, was a, it's a decent performance. You know, it's, it's a weird thing to say if you lose, you lose at home. Um, it was, it, at the end of the day, it was two, two sloppy mistakes, two bits of quick thinking by them, whatever you want to call it, um, from the corners. And that's given them the confidence. Um, to then go on, the third goal, I don't think you can criticise us. I mean, Hernandez is some player. And I thought Murray Wallace did well, actually, with him most of the afternoon to keep him under control. It's a great finish. At 3-1, it's kind of virtually game over, really. But um, I just, I thought we kept battling. Um, I didn't see any lack of um, effort. Um, I thought we were surprisingly fresh, uh, considering the last couple of games as well. Um, maybe Savile was slightly off the pace, but then, you know, if he's kind of been a bit injured, then that's that's fair enough. Um, there was quite a few good performances out there, really. You know, lots of good performances. Um, I thought Burke looked dangerous. I was a bit surprised he came off when he came off, actually, because didn't, he didn't look tired, and it, was, it looked like a danger in the air as well, which is unusual for him. And um, But anyway, you know, we, we, we kept battling away. It wasn't to be. I mean, good, good, good goal by Fleming. Bradshaw's goal was a really good goal. Great finish. And but I suppose going back to the first half, that was you know when you think about that's kind of where we lost it really. The end of the first half and beginning of the second, we were in control of the game. It's a bit like Sheffield United game where they scored towards the end of the first half and to make it one all. It's the same thing there. Um, I I thought I don't know. I only saw the goal once. I thought. Long probably could have done better, but maybe got deflection. Maybe it should have been closed down. Either way, that's gutting, but it's even more gutting to be caught out at a short corner in the second half as well. And then that got their towels up and, as I say, gave them the confidence. And they are, obviously, they're a good team. I mean, you don't want to give a, a good team confidence because it's going to make it even harder for you. But anyway, you know, I say, um, I can't be uh, critical of the team too much apart from those goals. Um, we just need to, you know, reform. We've got a week now to kind of get those aching limbs um, back to fully full fitness and, you know, get some more bodies back. Um, it's, and three really important games. They're all important, I know. Um, but Reading, get something away then. Two home games. We've got to be getting six points out of the next three games at least, I think, to kind of keep us keep us in the hunt. Um, and, um, and then see where we are after the international break. But, um, yeah. So, disappointing result, good performance, um, we've just got to keep battling, we've got to keep going. All right, cheers Nick, see ya, come on you Lions. Hello Nick, Bill Slack here. I came out the ground today genuinely hoping that global warming really was a thing and that the sea levels would rise to such a point that the whole county of Norfolk had be flooded and then every single middle class ponce that was there today in their end would have to go and live in a tent in Claxon for the rest of their lives. Cheers, mate. Huge welcome on the show now to um, a voice we haven't had for a little while. It's good, good to talk to you again. It's Angelo Miliotto. How are you doing, Angelo? Yeah, all good, Nick. Nice to be back on, mate. Uh, under uh, not good circumstances after today's game, but nice to be back on, mate. 
Yeah, um, a very frustrating result, I think it's fair to say, Angelo. I mean, I thought we, we started at a blistering pace in that first half. And I thought we when we went that first goal up through Tom Bradshaw, I thought we were really going to take control of the game. But um real sense of letting uh, points slip through our fingers there today. It was it was within our grasp and um, just went off the boil somewhat, didn't we, after that opening goal by, by Bradshaw, which was very well taken, incidentally, very nicely finished. But we just seemed to let it get out of our grasp, rather, once once we went in the head. Yeah, it, it, it was, uh, it's one of them Bradshaw goals that we've got used to him missing because he had too much time, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, but he, yeah uh, absolutely. But obviously the guy is playing with so much confidence. I think that's nine goals in 11. I believe he's the top uh, championship goal scorer of 2023 uh, in the whole league. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he, t- he took it fantastically well, mate. Brilliant. Um, yeah, my, my take on it, Nick, was we was in complete control. We looked comfortable. I wasn't worried. I, I was happy. And then two set pieces have, yeah. uh, have undone us, basically, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I personally, I want to give... You've got to give Norwich the credit for coming up with these two set pieces because they caught us cold on both of them. But on the other side of the coin, you know, our defending, we've we got to pick up people that are not marked. And on both of them set pieces, um, that you know, they, they got through too easy, in my opinion, you know. Defending was poor for both. I mean, I, I was reading, someone posted on, as I was coming home tonight, I'm trying, I was looking through Twitter, someone posted that uh, Norwich, they said that Norwich were not predictable, whereas we pumped the ball in towards the big man, Jay Cooper, uh, Cresswell and so on. It's, it's a fairly regular corner routine for us. Um, Norwich knew they weren't going to beat us in the air, so they played it short. They worked little routines, obviously training ground routines. And both really were, 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 were opportunities created like that. They weren't obvious corner routines, no. actually, were they? I mean, no. I, I don't know. The first one was that um, coming from the right side and it was it was played um, across the diagonal of the penalty area and caught kind of like a, a side foot goal. I think it went through, it may have been Fleming. It was, I was a long way from it, so I couldn't see clearly. Um, George Long um, is regularly criticised. I don't know that it's entirely fair to say he should have got that. I, I don't know how you see it, but... I thought it was a well taken routine rather than um, a poor goalkeeping. Certainly, yeah. I, I, I take the point about picking your man up. We, we didn't do that well enough, but um, I'm not sure you can really criticise George Long. How did you see it from your side? Well, luckily enough, Nick, I'm behind that goal. I'm behind that goal. I, I had right. a perfect view of it. Yeah. So literally, right. You know what they've done, which is quite clever of them, is they like most of their players have gone six yard box to to pull all of our players in in, in towards our goal. And then obviously yeah. the corner's gone out to the guy. He's hit it really, really well. It's hit Fleming and then it's deflected off Fleming into the goal. In my opinion, you cannot get put put that on George Long, mate. You can't do it. it you know, it's 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 a powerful shot, it's deflected, and yeah, it's just one of them ones, you know. Um, Millwall fans do love a scapegoat, Angelo, and I think that he, uh, Long has become like short favourite. I mean, he's made some moments, and I, yeah. all goalkeepers do. Um, but I think he also does make some good saves. We saw that in the second half. Actually, he made one or two decent saves from, um, especially once they went further ahead. I think there was a, yeah. a, a header late in the in the game. He did well to get a, to get a fingertip to. Um, that really deflated the den. I thought um, with that equaliser. I, I, I don't know how you saw it, but I, I felt that there was a real. Uh, there was a massive noise in the ground. I think the, the, the place was well up for it, but you just had a sense of air going out of the balloon at that point. Yeah, you know? 100%, mate, 100%. I, I agree with that at all. You know, exactly. And I said to my mate, I said, we need half time here because, um, yeah. you know, we, we just need to regroup. And, you know, the good thing about Mill, we got a lot of experienced players in our teams, mate, that, 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 that can deal with a setback like that. But, you know, and, and I thought, you know, when we come out in the second half, you know, I was more than confident that we'd get Sank out of the game. But then it happens again, you know, another clever, clever corner by them. And I, I've yeah. heard, I'm, I'm at the opposite end of the stadium. I've heard that the guy's hit it across and it's gone in off Bradshaw or something. I, 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 well, I was much, much closer to yeah. that because that was actually down at my end. Yeah. And so I got a very good view of that. Again, it was a clever routine. They've taken it short when we're all expecting it to go in conventionally, as, as a corner normally does. Mm. And they basically put a decent cross into a dangerous area. Well, you know, as we all know, we've all followed football long enough. If you do that, um, you know, reasonably often, you're going to get uh, lucky little flicks. It caught the back of uh, Bradshaw's heel as it's come in at pace. 
and beaten is beaten Jules Long. I don't think he could have done much about it because it was such a close range incident. Yeah. Um, but that was another deflator, Angelo. I, I thought as soon as that went in, it felt like a, a mountain yeah. had suddenly risen up in front of us from out of nowhere, really, because we we had been going quite well in the first half. Um, I mean, I've, I've got to take my hat off to them for the third goal, though. I thought that was a real quality move. Um, poor old Murray got roasted for pace down the right side by their winger, who I thought looked a, a dangerous mm. dangerous player. And um, it was a well-taken chance in, in the penalty area. I don't think there was much we could have done about that other than be a lot faster. <laughs> Maybe if Murray could double his pace, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. might help. Yeah, you know, uh, that, that goal, the, the pace of that, that guy, his name's Hernandez, yeah? And uh, funny enough, right. he was out of favour with Norwich last year and he went on loan to Birmingham and, and I... He is such a good player, powerful, fast, you know. And I'm thinking, how's Birmingham getting a play like that? And and we 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 can't we can't sniff out a play like that. But yeah, he completely outpaced. You know, listen, he, he he's a decent player. He's completely outpaced Murray, and the guys turn, yeah. and it's a world class finish, mate. So from some Brazilian guy that they got for like five. Gomez, sorry, I'm just looking at the team yeah. lineup. Number seventeen coming. I mean, for him. Yeah. Nothing much anyone could have done about that, but no. that that the bouncing got even higher at that stage. I thought, yeah. well, that that really is is that. But I, I do want to take my hat off to um, Millwall for making a, a flurry back late. I mean, it was it was always going to be a bit beyond us, but we did get close. I mean, it was a well taken goal. I think in real time, I thought it was Cresswell that got the goal. It was actually Fleming. I've, yeah. I've seen now. So. Yeah, fantastic I'll, um, header. Fantastic header. I'll, cor- I'll correct my, my bit of commentary because I thought it was Chris. Well, yeah. But I was a long way away from it, listeners. So um, it was hard to tell at that le- length, you know. Um, great header. And that, that gave us real hope there, Angelo. And mm. I must admit, I thought we'd... Um, w- I, I still felt hopeful going into those last five or so minutes plus added time. And of course, there was that late, late chance where I think it was Bradshaw um, yeah. had, a, had a shot. Hacked off the line, didn't he? Yeah, in in yeah. deep in the uh, the injury time. Um, so it's a, it's a strange mixture of um, bad luck and bad judgment today because there were also moments where we played quite well. I, I, I can't I can't knock the overall performance, but there were large chunks of it that weren't good enough. So it's a really odd mixture yeah. of a game today. You know, at the end of the game, Nick. Yeah, I was obviously very disappointed. Right, that we've lost the game. I hate losing the games. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but, right. You know, let, let's let's like the, the the way I'm seeing it now is we've got eleven games left, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And, and we have just had one of the toughest Februarys uh, uh, that, you know, that you could you could have, yeah. We've had a you know we've had the two top two. Um, Luton's not easy. We've had the gut the Stoke. That's not easy. Uh, it's been a tough tough month, you know. Uh, with two games a week, it, it's hit our squad. There's a lot of uh, walking wounded at the moment. And there are, and, and I think I think the players should be proud of themselves for the month of February. We've now luckily got a week off, yeah. And then yeah. when you blessed look, relief, yeah. yeah. And when you look at the fixtures that now, Nick, I said to my mate, right, the season starts right now. We've got eleven games left. We got three tough games. We have got Luton at home. We got West Brom away, and the final game of the season, we got Blackburn at home. Blackburn, the rest, yeah. On paper, we should beat these teams, yeah. yeah? So, you know, we've got one of the easier run-ins, Nick, as well. Um, so, I'm I'm gutted about today, but I'm still very, very positive, and I'll be shocked if we don't make the playoffs, mate. I, 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 I know what you mean. I mean, obviously, um, we tumbled out of the, I say tumbled, we were one point off the top six now. Then with that defeat today, has put us in seventh position, one point behind Norwich City, and now occupied a sixth spot. I, I do agree that the run-in is going to be where this season begins or finishes, as, yeah. as, as, as you may want to see it. We've got a trip away to Reading next week. We've got to be looking to win these kinds of games, Angelo. There's yeah. no, there's going to be no place to hide if we don't start getting three points from Reading away, Swansea City at home, and then Huddersfield Town at home yeah. the week after that. So that's a big week, actually, from next Saturday... Tuesday, Saturday. There's a big seven days and a big nine points to be had there. Yeah. I think we've got to maximise that week. Um, but I do agree. I, I, I don't think we're out of it. I, I, I just think it's um, it now sets the table for a massive week ahead. We've done the huge amounts. I mean, I think it's easy to forget in the aftermath of a disappointing loss today that there have been some massive performances. I mean, the Burnley game and the and the Sheffield United game, for example, yeah. wins at, at um, difficult to go to places, Stoke and so on. Um I mean, the players have performed small miracles to get through that February. There's a massive workload they've taken on there, which 
I know other teams also have the same kind of, um, you know, routine and schedule, but that's that's where we're at at the moment. And we are carrying a lot of injuries. It'd be yeah. it'd be great to see some of it. I mean, we do miss the likes of Billy Mitchell, I feel. Um, and I did like the look of Ryan Leonard today. He's clearly still a little bit rusty, but he's he's getting back to something like his, his old self. Some massive tackles in, in, in the game from Ryan Leonard. Um, who would you pick out as your... Difficult to pick a man in the match, I suppose. Who would you pick out as your uh, better yeah. performers today, shall we say? He's the one for me, Leonard. I thought Leonard was great today. Mate. Yeah. And, 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 and also, like he was dead on his feet at the end of the Luton game. He could, he, he could, he could barely walk. But today, no, no, he, no, no. today, he looked like he was getting stronger and stronger. He, he, in the second half, he was even... He looked stronger than what he was in the first half. Yeah, I was very impressed with him. Um, and, and, and also, one thing I'd like to say, Nick, as well, is Cresswell's been getting a lot better. He was a little bit nervy yeah. today, yeah? But, yeah, one or two errors. Yeah. 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 But it, but yeah. And, and also, I, I do blame Hutch for that goal at Luton uh, on, uh, you know, their equaliser. Because Hutch should have closed yeah. the guy down. Yeah. But after saying that, I want Hutch straight back in. The reason I want Hutch straight back in is because we, you know, he is, a, you know, he is our captain. Cooper does play a lot better with him. We need the experience now. And these next 11 games, we, we need, in my opinion, we just need the most experience we've got out there. So I would personally, I'm not blaming Cresswell for, for, for any of the no, goals, but just, I'll, I'll just bring, I'll bring Hutch back in there. Time to make a change. Yeah, I'll bring um, him back in, mate. Like we've conceded five goals in two games. That's a very unlike Millwall. And again, I'm not blaming Cresswell, but with Hutch in the team, yeah, we do tend to do a lot better, and uh, and I'll bring him straight back in now. I just think that you know you're right. Five goals in in, in two games has not been us. I just think fatigue is catching up with us, Angelo, and yeah. I think that the next week will be um, hopefully well used by the by the, uh, the management to at least uh, get some get the, the squad re- rejuvenated for that trip to ready. If we can get three points at uh, the Majeski Stadium, whatever it's called now. Um, you know, this will go. This will fa- rapidly fade into the past, and we, we, you know, we can get back on the road again. And I think that's yeah. going to be a, the, the the next massive, massive situation. Oh. Um, I just want to mention Burke. I, I don't know what I think about Oliver Burke, Angelo, and I, I, I wanted to ask you. So he shows both skill and pace, and also I'm not sure he's a middle player at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, do, do little, know, he pulled out of a one-on-one, didn't he, in the second yeah. half? Yeah. Mm. Do, do you know what? That's, Nick, not, right? that's not. I, I, I can remember. I remember that guy. He came to Millwall uh, playing for Nottingham Forest when he first broke into into their first team, and I, I remember yeah. him that night. He was so fast and powerful. I said to my son, "I said this guy is going to be some player." Do you know what I mean? And yeah. everywhere yeah. he's gone, mate, he's just he's like he just he's a sick. He's got the ability to be a top Premiership player, but I don't know what he it does. Is, mate. I don't know what it is with the guy. He's um, it's failure to to launch or ignite, or whatever, and there's a movie in there. It's a failure to launch or something like that. I don't know. But, but and it's uh, a bit like that. Yeah. there's something in there, but you don't. You oh, don't, mate, there don't, is, don't there show. Is, there's hundred percent something in there. Like some of the leaps he does for headers is fantastic. His pace is incredible. He's as strong as an ox. Yeah. But there's just something missing. So it must be just his mentality. I can't think of anything else, mate, because he has got he's got all of the credentials to be an outstanding player, you know. Um He's one player. of these players that I'm, just, I'm looking at the BBC website listeners. So we've got Burke obviously then in the middle of Zian Fleming. And I think there's there's two interesting players there, because uh, Burke, I think you're right, is less than his sum of his talent, if you want to put it that way, that mm-hmm. makes sense. And Zian is more than the sum of his talent. He, he does have the attitude. He's got the physique. He will get stuck in. He'll do the work. And he's more of a Millwall player. He's got touch and you know yeah. vision and all the rest of it. But somehow he's 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 got that extra something that we look for at the den. Certainly, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't want to knock Burke too much. You won't get away with that with bottling um, one on ones though. Uh, I'll no. if you're listening, mate, at the den. Yeah, that's that's about the last club on earth that you can do that. 100%. Expect to get praised for it. Um, big shout out to Tom Bradshaw. I'm lucky to concede the own goal today. Um, I thought he really scored the the opener very very well. And he's, I mean, you you know, as you said, Angel. I mean, they must be shattered after this 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 February. I mean, it must be. Um, yeah, you know, Bradshaw's uh, running is is incredible. In, um, incredible that guy, mate. Incredible his running. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know how he does it. I don't. 
Yeah. Also, shout out to Rom- Romain Esso. I think really looks the part. I mean, he had a, a, more time today, 21 minutes he came in, 69th minute. Um, I do think he looks the part. Whether he's a starter yet or not, I don't know, yeah. Anjo, but I would like to see him feature in our games when you know when we're going forwards. He does look like he's got that X factor, doesn't he? Yeah, you took, the, you took the words out of my mouth, mate. I was exactly going to say, Sophie, he's got the X factor, the kid. And um, I, I think... I think next season we we will see a lot of that though, of that guy. But yeah, he had a few little touches today. Uh, yeah. um, even George uh, um, George Evans put in a lovely cross in today as well. You know, I know I know a lot of people don't like him playing, but you know, credit to him, he he come on put across a, uh, a dangerous cross uh, uh, across the goal. Um, but yeah, it was that last yeah. pass, wasn't it, Nick? That one that got cleared off the line. That was the killer. That was a gutter. That, yeah, was, a gutter. that was. was yeah. There is that, that was a kick, the kick in the kick yeah. in the ball was basically. Yeah. Um, onwards, onwards to Reading next week. Um, the game's still there to be had, listeners, so um, let's not be downcast for too long. Angelo, I want to say thank you. Joining no me on a Saturday night, mate. I re- really appreciate it, mate. Um, big thank you. Great to see you again, and um, always good to hear from you. Yeah, and I just, Nick, I just want to say, I just want to say, well done to the fans as well, because like everyone near where I was, where I was sitting today, applauded the team off, right? And 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 I love that, mate, because they did try their hardest there. There's a lot of walking wounded, and, and it's great that there's no booze. There was none of that, and and, and I was really no, good. no, you know, and 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 uh, we just got to get beyond. I make you right. No, it's good, it's good to see because as we've said, yeah. the, the season is not yet over. No, and even if it is over at some point, the the squad have given the maximum, yeah. um, and that they will continue to give up the maximum. So, um, yeah. no, fair, and also it was a good noise in, in in the first half. It was it was um, really very strong. Yeah. Atmosphere. Obviously, it went off the boil once once Norwich got out in front. But um, well done, everyone today. Yeah. Another full house as well. Yeah, Angelo. That's um, you know coming thick and fast. Big thank you, Andrew Mini also. Thank you very much. Thanks Take a lot, care, mate. mate. Cheers, Nick. Achtung, Millwall. Good afternoon, dear listeners. Welcome to a postscript for Achtung, Millwall. Um, I think in my real time commentary. I think I said the uh, second mill goal was scored by Charlie Cresswell. It was, of course, CM Fleming from a corner late into the game. Um, just a few bits and pieces, really. I just wanted to pick up on um, some of the internet comment I'm seeing, um, blaming George Long for both of the goals, actually, that Norwich City scored. I'm just looking at the YouTube footage um, as I'm speaking to you. It's a great, uh, obviously, opening finish from Tom Bradshaw. But coming on to the... Um, Equaliser, which I'm looking at right now, um, if you're going to blame anyone, you've got to blame the defenders and blame Zian Fleming because as the shot comes in from the edge of the penalty area, which is a fairly um, well-struck low-level shot, Zian actually is, is directly in front of George Long and there's nothing he can do as it deflects off of him into the net. A um, bit of scapegoating going on there, dear listeners, I, I feel. Um, you can't really blame Jules Long. He's had his critics. He's a great save there from a, this is a second half. This is a shot from distance from Norwich City. It looked like a decent side when they took control of the game yesterday, to be to be fair. Um, and again, going back to defensive errors, I'm looking at the second corner here, which is probably the critical goal. Um, not picking up the men. Now, there's nothing Jules Long could have done about that strike in that came off of Tom Bradshaw's heel. So... Um, anyone out there that's blaming Jules Long yesterday for those two goals, uh, what's the expression? Give your head a bit of a wobble because um, you're probably not looking at what happened, more on some preconceived notions of other incidents and other, other moments in other games. He made some good saves yesterday. So, um, you know, the two the two goals, the two critical goals that put them in front, nothing anyone could have done about the third goal. That was, a, I think I've seen it described as a world-class goal and um, it was a very, very well-taken strike. That's for sure. Nice move. Poor old Murray getting roasted for pace, as I said in my commentary with, um, with Angelo earlier on in this show. Just wanted to run through one or two of the tweets, just as a bit of a postscript. I'm um, just reading through some of the uh, posts from yesterday. Tom S um, says, rightly, in my opinion, we shouldn't beat ourselves up for what um, or overanalyze for that, that result yesterday. We lost to a good team who have underachieved so far. That's a fair point there, Tom. I mean, Norwich City are an expensively assembled side, as we face so often in this in this championship. Um, and we could, ultimately, the game, he says, was decided by an absolutely mustard player smacking in a worldie. It happens, says Tom. Um, and I think we've made that point a few times over the course of the show. I think even in real time, I said it was a, a strong finish, and so it was. 
Um, yesterday was also notable for the absolutely surreal visit of uh, FIFA president, is he? Um, head of FIFA, anyway. Gianni Infantino, who apparently was in London for a conference and asked to come to watch Millwall. I mean, I can't fault the man for his taste in that case. Um, and you can make all sorts of uh, snarky points online, as has been done about, you know, the whole human rights issues, FIFA and its, its money-making and all the rest of it, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's a massive feather in the cap for Millwall. I mean, I, I, I'm going to leave aside all those um, aspects that uh, the... the, the you know the the right the what does what did call them the bien pens bien pensant the right thinking the good the, the correct thinkers out there might say and they have you know, their points but it's just wonderful <laughs> to see this footage of uh, Infantino head of this world organization at the den there's a meeting Delia Smith obviously on the Norwich City side yesterday standing next to Constantine Gonzalez one of our board members. Um, I think speaks, uh, he may speak Italian. I know he's, he's, um, he's got one or two languages, Con. So um, anyway, there it is, great stuff. And um, as I posted yesterday, surely the most um, bizarre moment, I think, ever of my Millwall supporting career in that sense. And the only other thing I can think of that comes close to it was seeing the UEFA flag flying above the, uh, the, the, the East Stand when we played Ferenc Varos in, in the UEFA Cup. A um, few other bits and pieces. Charlie, I, IOD, Isle of Dogs, I'm guessing, Charlie. Um, training field moves and a goal of real quality caught us out yesterday, yet Roman SA again showed some moments of real quality. One of his passes cut Norwich wide open. But is he old enough and tough enough to start, asks Charlie. Uh, probably not yet, Charlie. I... I, I know what you mean. He does look the business when he comes on. I'm going to guess that Gary Rowett, especially over the next crucial three or four games, we've got some big fixtures to, to come where we really do want wins. Um, it may keep him in reserve. These are big, big games, big, big situations. We're away at Reading, obviously, next Saturday. I think it's Swansea and, and Huddersfield, is it, after that, at home? Um, we've got a big week ahead. Thankfully, we've got a few days off of rest this week. A uh, chance for a very tired squad to recuperate and get some legs back. I hope also to get some confidence and some um, some mojo back. I must admit, when I recorded last night speaking to Angelo listeners, I felt a bit deflated. I think there was a, a couple of moments during the course of the afternoon we touched on it in our conversation um, about the den feeling deflated. It was a big, felt like a big loss yesterday. In the cold light of day, we're still one point off of the top six. And we've got fixtures ahead that we really do want to be taking maximum points from. So um, a big week ahead uh, from, the, thankfully, a rest this week and then a big week ahead after that. Um, Jay Graham says he hasn't been pissed off by a game so much in a long time. We never beat Norwich. We, we do beat Norwich, Jay. We, it just seems that, that way in the uh, in the moment. Um, and one or two others. Um, a few captions, some great captions, obviously, with Infantino looking out from the... the uh, the uh, director's box, some captions here. Christian Hamilton speculates that um, he's, he's here to get us into the new European Super League. We're going to supersede Spurs in the new Super League, um, which I think is, is a laugh. And another one that made me laugh was, um, I think, BBL, Block 10 CBL. Uh, he's, supposed to, he's got Infantino rolling up laughing. He says he comes from Amsterdam and he fucking hates where it stands. These fans are killing me, says BL10. I, I like that caption. Um, one last one, Bermondsey Bill, I think captures it all for me. To, a game too far today, Mill, uh, time to drop long, he says. Don't know, um, don't know mate, um, Bart saved some of them shots today. Maybe, maybe not. Previous games, it's all well and good being good at distribution, but when he's costing us points, it's irrelevant. We also need to drop Cressy and Muzza. Um, I think tired players make errors, and I'm hoping that that will be what turns around with a blessed relief of a few days um, on the on the Calment tra training ground and uh, a little bit of uh, light R and R. There we are, dear listeners. So it finishes uh, Norwich beating us three two at the Den. Um, we will be taking a few days out. Um, it's been a hectic period lately, isn't it? February um, on and off the pitch. I am going to be at Reading next Saturday. Um, so until after the Reading game, is it still called the Majeski Stadium? Don't know, don't care. I uh, shall be talking to you in the aftermath of whatever transpires 
in the Royal Borough of Berkshire next week. So until then, thank you for listening. Uh, do keep in touch with us. I'll leave a dirty Millwall and bye for now. Achtung, Millwall.